Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to introduce the United States Secretary of Homeland Security, the Honorable Jay Johnson. Thank you for the terrific support of the department in so many of our missions through the CREATE program. We couldn't do it without organizations such as, such as this. We have a unity of effort initiative in the Department of Homeland Security, which I'll talk more about. Many of our components have been stovepiped. That's a Washington term, stovepiped. And we're bringing a more coordinated, strategic approach to homeland security in general. We want to do away with the stovepipes. We have evolved to a new phase in the global terrorist threat and how we must respond to it. We see more Al-Qaeda affiliates, Al-Qaeda adherents, and we see terrorist organizations that core Al-Qaeda has renounced, ISIL being the number one example of that. We see the rise of so-called foreign fighters, people who leave their home countries and go to places like Syria, take up the fight there, and then sooner or later return or try to return to their home countries with an extremist mission. We see a very effective slick use of social media, of the internet, by organizations such as ISIL that have the potential to recruit and indoctrinate people in their home countries without that person ever having gone to one of the training camps or receiving a direct order from a terrorist leader. And so the threat now is more complex, it's more decentralized, and involves more of a potential threat in the homeland from people who may simply become inspired by what they see on the internet to commit small-scale attacks. That means a more comprehensive whole-of-government approach to our counterterrorism efforts. We believe that we need to partner more closely with the LAPD, with the NYPD, other major metropolitan police departments. We need to engage community organizations that themselves have the capacity to reach those who may be inclined to turn to violence. Everyone here, I'm sure, has heard of our executive actions to reform the immigration system. We're focusing more on convicted criminals as opposed to people in the interior who have been here for years, who have committed no serious crimes. We have finite resources. I want to see our department focus more on criminals. We have prioritized border security, security at the border, and we're supporting high-skilled workers by facilitating getting green cards earlier in high-tech for high-skilled workers. So we've done a number of things to reform the system. Since the 1980s, the population of undocumented in this country, according to Pew, has stopped growing. More than half, according to Pew, of that number, 11.3, has been here more than 10 years. So it is a relatively stagnant population that is effectively integrated into our society, and they're not going anywhere. Uh, we are not going to deport 11 million people, which is why we decided to create the Deferred Action Program for parents as well as children who qualify, who have been here more than five years. We want to know who those people are. We want them to come out of the shadows for a number of reasons, including the law enforcement reason. From the perspective of law enforcement, we want to know who these people are. We want to encourage them to report crimes. We want them on the books. We want them paying taxes. Cybersecurity is another important priority of ours in DHS. There are attacks daily in the United States on our cyber infrastructure, on our internet, as all of you know. Uh, we we uh, pursue our cybersecurity mission through the National Protections and Programs Directorate. Coast Guard has a maritime cybersecurity uh, mission, and the Secret Service. The Secret Service does protection, but the Secret Service is also uh, a group of criminal investigators. Combating Ebola, everybody here knows about the Ebola virus outbreak in West Africa last year. Through Customs and Border Protection, uh, we had a mission combating Ebola as well, which is screening people who may leave those countries and flying to the homeland. We include the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, uh, which trains federal law enforcement, uh, and we include the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard, may interest you to know, 
is the oldest fleet of vessels in the world. It is the oldest Navy in the world, and we're in the midst of rebuilding the fleet. We're on a continuing resolution right now, which expires on February 27th. What that means is that we are constrained in our spending to last year's spending levels, and we don't know how many more CRs we're gonna get. It's a little like trying to drive across country on no more than five gallons of gas at a time, and you don't know where the next gas station is. Congress right now is at an impasse. The House passed a bill, which was a good bill, and the Senate has not acted on the House bill, and at the moment they're doing this. Given the global terrorist threat, given our need for added border security, and all the other things, we need a fully funded Department of Homeland Security. The most important thing we can do for the strength of our nation is preserve our values and be not afraid. You cannot terrorize somebody. You cannot, terrorism cannot succeed if we are not terrorized, as somebody once said. And so, relatively early on in my job as Secretary of Homeland Security, I realized that Homeland Security is striking a balance between preserving our liberties, preserving our values, and basic security. I can build you a perfectly safe commercial airplane and a perfectly safe commercial flight, but you would never want to fly on it because you'd have no meals, you'd have no clothes, you would not be allowed to get up, you would have no carry-on luggage. I can build you a perfectly safe city, but it will look like a prison. And so part of Homeland Security is preserving our values, encouraging our people to associate, embracing diversity, and not being afraid. And so we see that across the entire world.